to find out from you since you've also had frog meat. Mm. How does it taste? I enjoy frog meat. Like if I see if I see frog on the menu, I, I'm like, oh, I could go for some frog. So it's a uh, you need to be very very careful. Make sure you read contracts very carefully when you sign them in China. Um, Anything you don't agree with, don't like, think, oh, you know. What's up, beautiful people? It's your boy Jay to the O, to another Jay to the O. You're surely Jojo. And you know what it is. Today I'm bringing you another episode right here on Talk to Jojo. If it's the first time you're watching my video, please watch the like, sub, and put me on post notification. But for the video, you get a chance to see it. Today we're talking to someone special, a friend, a colleague at work. And he's got the gist for you guys. So, stick around and get all the gist. Make sure you like. Let's get right into it. What's up, Tom? Not much. How are you doing? Not good. Yeah, myself too. Not too bad. Not too bad. Right. Yeah. So, um, Tom, we're basically going to find out how life has been for you like, yeah. Yeah, in China. Sure. So, let's start by asking how long have you been in China? So, uh, only this time around, been here for two years. Uh, previously studied in Shanghai and Beijing a year each time, and then prior to that, my degree was Chinese, so uh, Chinese right. and Spanish. So I also um, did multiple trips abroad as part of right. my degree, part of my schooling, other things like that. So I've been to China many, many times, um, but this is the longest consecutive period um, living in Wuhan. Uh, yeah, love Wuhan. It's great. Right. Much prefer it to Shanghai. Much cheaper. <laughs> Which more affordable yeah, style of living. Affordable yeah, yeah, yeah. China. Definitely. So I was like school in China. I was I was like for you. It's different, very different. So in the UK, when I was in university, we'd have maybe fifteen hours of class time a week. Right. So maybe two hours a day. Hours a day. Yeah. yeah. Some days would be four hours, some days you wouldn't have any classes. In China it's very much a case of eight AM to twelve PM <laughs> every day, yeah, right? Sure. And it's hardcore. Yeah. It's you get like an hour class, five minute break, hour class, class 20 minute lunch break, hour class, hour class. And it's, you know, it's full on. It's very intense. Um, the course I studied, everyone was studying the same course, Chinese language course. Um, but there was four modules, speaking, listening, reading and writing. Uh, was that four? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm an English teacher, not a maths teacher. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, it was... The level that we were at, they gave you like a, an entrance exam when you got there, which would determine the level of the class you got put in, just so they could determine whether you spoke no Chinese at all. And there was very beginner classes, which would yeah. be taught all in English, um, or the more intermediate classes and the higher level classes, and they were all taught in Chinese. So how was like life on campus? Like check out the uh, password. Mm. Uh, Living on campus, yeah, bonding or being around other foreigners mm -hmm. and the locals as well. How was it like? Yeah, so I'm sure you had a you had a, you had a Chinese. No, uh, no surprise, not in Beijing or, or like Shanghai. Beijing. No, um, when I was in Shanghai, I was trying to do long distance with a girl from the UK, and that that failed. That didn't work. But yeah, not nothing at that point. But um, <laughs> but no, um, with. Beijing, that was, I was living on campus itself, so in a specific block for foreigners, all the foreign students had it, and like there was a lot of things that were very, very different to like, I use Britain as the example because obviously that's what I'm also used to. Yeah. Um, British university halls are kind of, everyone gets a very small room, but it's your own room, you might have a communal kitchen, uh, but you have your own bathroom generally. In the place I uh, studied in Beijing, it was a communal bathroom, but it was like all squat toilets at the time. So I and there was no other option. How did you find that? How, how was it like? I got squat. good at squatting, <laughs> <laughs> but there's <laughs> nothing else to say on that front. I don't think um, communal kitchens as well. Uh, but as I say, it was too cheap to eat in the school canteens. And you know what the food's like in Chinese canteens? Really good, generally very healthy and very cheap. So there was no incentive to cook. Okay. The kitchens never got used by anyone because it was more expensive to buy materials to cook, and take them back and cook and do all the effort that was required than it was to simply just go down to the canteen and pay, pay two kuai on your, your card. And, like and, yeah, as I say, I don't think it'd be that cheap now. 
Um, now you're probably looking at maybe about 10 million, 8 million. Yeah. I think it's all still subsidized like yeah, by the school, so it, it's still yeah. way cheaper it's than cheaper. food on the street. Yeah, food definitely, food definitely cheaper. So now let's talk about food since we're talking about food. Sure. Uh, how was it like for you when you got here first, trying to get used to Chinese food? Yeah, um, <laughs> I've always kind of been open-minded food-wise, and I'll, I'll try anything. Once really? I'll try anything once. If yeah. it's terrible, I won't try it again. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of open to just trying anything. Not some things like I, I'm, I've got a dog. You can't see him. He's in a different room. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't eat dog meat, for example. Um, <laughs> just just for one example. Um, but you know, m other things. I most things I'd, I'd be open to try once or twice. Um, so for me, it wasn't really a problem. What's the weirdest uh, Chinese cuisine? Weirdest something intestine stew, intestine soups. What kind of like from what animal? Any any animals' intestines. Like when it gets thrown into a hot pot, you know, you're eating hot pot with your friends, especially yeah. with Chinese friends. I'll just throw the throw the intestines in. You'll reach in, thinking you're getting a nice. Do you, do you ask what kind of like? No, you don't. I mean, I've, I've eaten poor uh, beef intestines, pig intestines, yeah. chicken intestines. You know. I've eaten anything's intestines, I guess, at this point, and like, flavor isn't bad. Like beef stomach, and I would not have said this five years ago, but I like beef stomach, yeah. and like cow stomach. Now I'm like, mm, yeah, I'll go for a bit of cow yeah, stomach. Yeah, it's tasty. But um, but I still think to myself, this is wrong when I'm eating it. You know, it just feels wrong eating in a. But you still take it down. Oh yeah, of course. Good. I mean, we, it's good. We we we, we do. Uh, example, we have like uh, uh, yeah. Uh, chicken, mm. lamb, yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice, but I've never had. Uh, no, I, I can't think of I've specifically had pig, what? pig parts, but <laughs> probably in my time here, I've probably had yeah, them without frog knowing. Food. Yes, yeah, frogs good. So I spoke. I, I had an interview with one one guy, right? Uh, Sasso. Mm. And you, he told me he had frog meat. Yeah. Mistakenly, he had frog meat, but he, he, it tasted nice to him. Yep. Oh. But you know, the frog <laughs> tastes good, though. I no! Know. I, I had frog by mistake. Oh, okay. I, I had it by mistake, by mistake. And it was good, but I regret it. Now, when I found out it was frog, I was like, shit, what did I. I want to find out for you, since you've also had frog meat, mm. how does it taste? I enjoy frog meat. Like, if I see, if I see frog on the menu, I, I'm like, ooh, I could go for some frog. Again, not something I've ever eaten before I came to China. Um, it's weird. It tastes like chicken. It's got a similar flavor to chicken, but the texture, like the, the consistency of the meat is like fish. Like it flakes like fish, like white fish, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you feel like you're eating fish, but it tastes like chicken, chicken. but it's an amphibian. It messes with your brain a little bit the first time you've had it, but... Oh, and the, the bones. Lots of bones. Lots of bones. In, in places there shouldn't be bones. Like there's there's like phantom bones floating around. And you're like, why is it? Why is there a bone here? There shouldn't be a bone here. Um, and they're very small as well. So you've got to be very careful yeah. when you're eating it, especially if you get like a whole frog you know in a what? pot. I, I, right now I'm just imagining myself like I'm eating frog, and I'm just all I'm doing is rip, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's a, it's an experience. It's definitely an experience. <laughs> It's good though. I would recommend it. Anyone who hasn't tried frog should try frog. That's should my frog. recommendation. So to you would recommend that I try frog. Yeah, you definitely should. How long have you been in China? You haven't eaten frog meat. That's disappointing. No, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm saying, if, if do it tonight. Order nah, one. Man, it's the nah, weekend. It's Friday, nah, right? Man. <laughs> I don't want to be on my bed jumping around. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, man. But anyways, I will try. It. If, only if I get about, let's say, let's say about 50 likes on this, <laughs> on this, on this video. You've you got to, you've got to, give, yeah, it, give him the likes. If I get 50 likes on this video, I'm going to try frog. Everyone should comment and you can take me to sure. the, we'll give some frog hot pot. the, the nicest yeah. uh, place where I can get frog. Absolutely. Tea, 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 tea. Mm. Right. So, you're, you're teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, how is it like teaching? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's easy, I guess. Um, I mean, 
most of the jobs require like a TEFL certificate, right? Yeah. A teaching which is a foreign language certificate, um, and not much else. Like you can get into China with very few qualifications in the teaching arena, kind of thing, and just yeah. kind of learn as you're doing. Like my first teaching job was my first job in China.、Um, Didn't end particularly well that specific、uh, job,、um, but、really? yeah,、okay. <laughs> yeah.、Please. But、um, <laughs> but besides that,、yeah. um, actually teaching, yeah, it's it's not too bad.、Um, I mean, you are thrown in at the deep end. You kind of you know you have to start taking all your classes straight away. You don't really get any training, yeah, so much training. Right. Yeah, and that can be a bit difficult for some people. I know some people that last two or three months and then just give up and go home. Like no, it's too hard. I thought this was just going to be me coming over and partying for a year, but no, I have to work forty hours, and you were expected to work your full forty、yeah. hours. You know, you you're there, you're putting your hours in, you're doing what you need to do.、Um, yeah, I, I think one thing to say would be don't expect it to be easy, because I think the, the physical teaching of the job, the like the actual content you're teaching is easy. Yeah, you, it's your own language, right?、Yeah. You're teaching your own language. It's, If you can't teach your own language, what can you teach? You know,、yeah. uh, you already speak it. <laughs> It's easy to to teach it, but with regards to like working conditions and stuff, it, it's similar to any any other country in terms of you work in a forty hour forty hours a week job. You're expected in your full five days. Yeah, yeah normal. Yeah, you've got some experience behind you, and you've got.、Um, The option to get out of the the starter jobs because there's kind of、yeah. all these companies that will take you on as you first come to China. Some of them really shady companies. Some of them not so bad.、Yeah. Um, <laughs> some of the big ones you'd expect them to be not so bad. They end up being really shady. Yeah, and again, it's you 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 work them as kind of like a probation. I think like. You do your time. You、yeah. serve your time, yeah. like a yeah. And then as soon as you you finish that period, you just get out of it, and you, your salary increases. And yeah, it's. I think it, it's for what we do, for what、yeah. we teach. I think the salary is really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Like if a similar, if you were teaching Spanish as a foreign language in the UK, and you were teaching the kind of content that we teach in English, it would be. You'd get paid less. So,、yeah. um, I want to ask.、Mm-hmm. Okay, if you were supposed to receive news, right? Which one would you prefer, good first or the bad? I like to get the bad out of the way first, generally. Bad.、Mm. So, what has been your、uh, one of the worst moments? The worst moments. That- You want to do good first because that, that's probably going to be a long story, a, a relatively long <laughs> okay, story. Okay, okay. So let's let's talk about your happy moments. Your yeah. Moments um, one thing I would definitely recommend anyone who lives in China or visits China to、yeah. do: if you come around January, go to Harbin,、yeah. go to the Ice Festival. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's it's out of this world. It's like Disneyland but minus thirty degrees Celsius. Like it's it's very. You have to wear like six layers of clothes. You have to wear long johns. A lot of stuff.、Man. I've been here eight years and never been to Harbin. Definitely recommend go to、yeah. Harbin.、Um, it's it's just something you can't really imagine until you see it. Whole cities built out of blocks of ice,、oh, and yeah, this huge festival where they build these incredible ice sculptures and stuff. And again, you can look at pictures on the internet to kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about、um, because it's hard to actually describe. How amazing it is until you see it. That that's something that I want to do it again.、Um, even though I hate the cold, but like I'm willing to put up with minus thirty temperatures. Me up. Yeah, definitely. 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 Yeah. Okay. So let's get into the. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into、yeah. your your worst moments. Uh, it could be work related. It could be. It is work related. It is work related. <laughs>、yeah. But. Ah,、uh, let me ask this one. Have you ever experienced any form of、uh, discrimination? Um. So occasionally you'll get some closed-minded Chinese people,、yeah. and I would say it's it's very rare. I in in the years that I've lived here, the kind of five or so consecutive years, not consecutive, five or so years that I've lived here over、okay. over the years, I've experienced maybe once or twice where somebody is. 
kind of noticed that I'm a foreigner and, and said something. Yes, you are. No, they usually say in Chinese to yeah. one of their friends, expecting you not to understand because yeah. most foreigners that live in China don't okay. speak Chinese. So they think they can get away with it, right? Um, but as I say, this has happened once or twice in twice. five years. Five years. Yeah. Well, that's nice. um, and the, the two times that it has happened, I've called the people out. Yeah. And I say like, you know, sometimes we can understand what you're saying. And as soon as you, not they say that, they the color drains from their face, they, they panic, they're like, I am so sorry. Like, I'll, 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 do you want a cigarette? Like, you know, <laughs> they, like just trying to apologize. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the, the work-related uh, mm. experience. Yeah, I think it's important to kind of talk about this because if I'd known more about this kind of situation before I moved to China, I would have been more cautious with various things, especially with choosing the company. I won't name the company because current ongoing legal issues and sure. stuff. Um, but one aspect of working in China is, from my perspective, and I'm sure you can kind of relate, relate yeah. yeah, is that sometimes companies that explicitly hire foreigners such as training centers um, some kindergartens international schools these kind of things these companies expect us not to speak chinese not to understand the law not to understand our own rights not to be able to read our contracts yeah. so they so they try and get away with things that are blatantly illegal and the chinese government the chinese legal system will catch them they'll they'll work on your behalf as a foreigner i've experienced it i've taken my previous company to labor arbitration and won currently in the next ongoing stages of a appeal claim that they've made all this kind of stuff um the rulings have always been in my favor as the worker um but like i would say to them no look you're you're saying this to me uh in the contract but the contract uh contravenes chinese law Chinese law says this, and I showed them the Chinese like contract law in Chinese, and they're like, "Yeah, but our contract says this." And I'm like, "Yes, but what you're not understanding is the contract is illegal because it doesn't follow the contract law." And they're like, "But you signed the contract." I'm like, "That's irrelevant. It's illegal. Like I didn't know what I was signing at the time." Yeah. And I mean, as I say, the courts sided I've with me. Side yeah. With you. Yeah, well, they side with the, the party that's correct, right? That's correct. Uh, that there's no bias. That's a good thing. Um, even if you're a foreigner and you go to court in China against a Chinese company, if you are in the right legally, you will win. Yeah. There's no bias on that front. Yeah. Um, I would say they're actually more lenient towards the worker, no matter who that worker is, whether he be Chinese uh, or foreign. Um, and it's something that you don't really know about until you get here and until you start hearing other people's stories or until you experience it yourself. My issue was I um, got a new job. So I read in the contract, okay, uh, what is the notice period? Notice period is two months per the contract. So I gave them my two months notice. I said, in two months, I will no longer work for this company. Got a new job. Yeah. Should be the end of it, right? Should be it. Yeah. That would, in a, in a yeah. logical you situation. Follow, follow what's in the yeah. Contract. So I'm prepared to give them the two months, no problem. Um, and at first they start like trying to bargain with me. They're like, how much more money do you want? I'm like, no, it's not a money thing. It's a quality of life thing. Yeah. Uh, my new job has better hours, more holiday pay, all these kind of things. Yeah. Um, and the wage was better, but that was irrelevant. Uh, it was more about the quality of life for me. Um, and <laughs> when I kind of said, no, there's nothing you can kind of offer me. Thank you very much. Um, I've been working for you, you know, I've had a great time. It might have been a bit of a lie. But, um, but you know, I said it anyway. I was polite all the way through, and they just immediately went with, okay, well, we're going to fine you two months' salary. We're not going to pay you your final two months' salary for the, the two months, which, which, is, which is illegal. Yeah. Um, and actually gives the worker, under I know this now, under Chinese law, the right to terminate the contract unilaterally and immediately. Um, which is what I did in the end. So we had this back and forth where I was saying, look, I, I've got a lawyer. My lawyer is advising me. This is all of the things that I, he's told me. I'm telling you directly, let's let's leave this on amicable terms, right? Let's do this friendly. I don't want to fuck you guys over, um, but I also don't want you to kind of steal from me, right? Steal two months wages from me, um, which was the plan. And 
they basically said to me, uh, one of the issues with regards to working in China is the company is in control of your work permit and your work permit is tied to your visa. So you have work permit related issues, you have visa related issues. You have visa related issues, you can be deported, right? So they use this as a weapon, they wield this against you, which is also illegal, very illegal, and the court hates it when they do this. So they tried that with me, they refused to cancel my work permit so that I couldn't apply for a new work permit at my new job, which meant I couldn't start my new job for two months. So although I wasn't working for the previous company, I couldn't start work for my new company. The government only allows you to have one work permit, right? Yeah. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So when they refused to cancel my work permit, they basically prevented me from receiving wages from a new company as well, which is the claim that I made against them. I said, um, one, I want my unpaid salary because that's ridiculous. Yeah. I've worked this month. You, you, work, you yeah. pay me that month, yeah. right? Um, and secondly of all, I want compensation in the form of two months salary from you at your salary rate because you prevented me from being able to work. Yeah. Um, you caused me significant financial distress. Oh. Yeah. And they countersued me. They tried to counter sue me for breaking the contract. And when they were explaining their side of the story to the judge, the judge said, but your contract is illegal under Chinese law. And the woman, the, the woman who was defending the company just said, oh, that was her only that, response. That was it? Yeah. And then she just kind of went, hmm, and then just kind of moved on. Like they knew they were not going to win in this, or, or at least maybe they, they, they might they have thought they were going to win. I um, <laughs> don't know. Um, but it was just absolutely bizarre to me that I seem to know Chinese law better than the HR legal team of a large company. It was not a small company, this. It was, you know, it, it's one that you, you put in work in China jobs. It's one of the first ones that will come up on, on Google. You know, it, it's it's a big, world-renowned company, and they'll still, they'll still kind of, you know, break the law brazenly. And there's not a lot you can do. You can take them to court. You, you'll win in the end. Like, again, I said I, I got awarded the money and they appealed it and all this kind of stuff. Um, but at the time, when you're having those work permit-related issues, the visa bureau doesn't understand the problem. They, they just say, well, you haven't got a work permit or your work permit hasn't been cancelled. We can't cancel your work permit. Your school has to. And I'm like, well, yeah, but my school won't. And they're like, but that's illegal. I'm like, I know. <laughs> but like that's the point like you can't get the police in because the police don't want to deal with labor related claims you have to take it to labor arbitration and the whole the whole problem is just how much time and effort it takes so in the end i know i'll win this so it's uh you need to be very very careful make sure you read contracts very carefully when you sign them in china um anything you don't agree with don't like think oh you know i can change that yeah, later you should ask yeah question yeah Get everything in writing. Definitely, definitely. In English. Yes, that's a thing. Um, WeChat messages can be used as evidence in Chinese court. That's useful information for people to know. So if you ever need to need evidence, take screenshots of uh, text messages, but as much paper evidence as you can get of the company, uh, the company's contracts and the various things that they've done right. um, is all very useful. You should you should always keep everything just right. in case you get kind of right. you know turned over um because it's only happened to me once fortunately for wood um but like future reference i would simply let a contract end rather than going through the, the whole nightmarish process that all this has happened i read my contract i saw give two months notice that's fine so i thought okay i can give two months notice that's fine and i'll leave but it's better to just let the contract end. Yeah, even if you really hate your job, um, I would always recommend just push through to the end of your contract because you try and leave out of that contract window, they're going to try and mess with you in some way. And it might be financial where they just say, we're not paying you your salary, and they take might us to court. That. They might try and fine you, which again is illegal. Companies can't fine their employees yeah. in China, but employees often don't know this, so they'll... So they end up paying some advice you would want to give to uh, people who want to come to China. Uh, doesn't matter where they come from. Advice. Sure. Um, all. I mean, obviously, if you've listened to the whole show, you kind of uh, you've got some advice from us already from yeah. various aspects. But 
definitely research the job opportunity that you're looking into. Don't just take, don't do what I did and take the first thing you see just as a way to get in. Um, definitely research the company. I researched my company afterwards and saw a lot of one star reviews. A lot of people experienced very similar things to me. Again, look into those reviews and take them very seriously because there's a reason why people are reviewing these companies so lowly. Yeah. There are some good companies that will give you a start out in China. Look for them. Even if your wage is a bit lower, definitely better off than getting a really shady company that will try and, you know, uh, bend you over in any way that they can. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me. Not a problem, mate. Okay, so guys, um, you heard it right here. Talk to Jojo. It's been a long conversation. I'm sure you enjoyed it. Please make sure to give us a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new and put us a post notification. Please share and let us know what you think in the comment section below. And tell him to eat frog. <laughs> if I get 50 likes on this video, okay? So, I'll see you on my next episode. Y'all know what's happening. This is your boy, Jay to the O, another Jay to the O. Yours truly, Jojo. And we are out. <laughs> interesting one. Yeah. Definitely an interesting one. Definitely an interesting one.